Welcome to Tools, Tech, and Gear. I'm Seth. Today I have the Redodo 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour, 1280 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. In this video, I want to showcase the outside of the battery and then do a full charge from solar and then do a discharge to see if this battery meets spec. I also want to show you the literature that comes with this. And um, to do the test, I'm going to be using this little meter here. And I've also got a kilowatt meter to take some time. And then I'll be using a 1500 watt inverter to um, pull a load from this thing. So let's take a closer look at the battery and then we'll get into this test. The front side of the battery has the Redodo logo with 12.8 volt, 100 amp hours. You can see it's a white case, which is kind of unique. And back here on the back, it does say 1,280 watt hours, 100 amp hours, 12.8 there. Now, if I turn to this side, you can see that it has a um, webbing handle that can be pretty easily removed if you uh, don't want to have this uh, flapping about. And then if you turn to the top, it's got the Redodo logo up there and then your positive and negative terminals. This does come with the uh, the terminal threads there and also has a spare set and then up here on the top you can pull these little caps off and have access to a phillips head right there all right so that's the basics of the outside of this battery let's go ahead and take a look at the instruction book real quick before we do a full charge on this the product manual for this battery is quite nice if you flip up here you can see 12.8 volt 14.4 plus or minus 0.2 volts and so I'm gonna charge this battery at 14.4 and hopefully we'll get full charge out of that. 1,280 watt and it's got 100 amps for the max continuous charge or discharge. Anyway, whenever you open this, it's got various uh, information on how to hook up. Um, you got your terminals and then if you open up here, it'll show you uh, testing the voltage on here. So it says to let this battery sit for a few minutes after it's been off of the charger to get that value. And uh, it just gives you a good bit of information here. This chart right here is nice, 100% at 13.5 volts, and it's 1% if it's at 10.8 volts, which you definitely don't wanna go that low. I'd recommend stopping at 12.8 right here at 10%. And then the rest of the pages here show uh, configuration for parallel or series. Uh, it says use gloves when handling this battery. As we saw earlier on the charge controller, 14.6 volts is where you can go on that. So yes, that little booklet is nice and handy. The other page that comes with this battery is a quick start guide. Just shows you some handling and some charging information. Um, you are able to mount this any direction except for upside down, which is nice. Don't stick it in fire or water. Don't open the battery. So that's just kind of what... Uh, this page is all about here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that plastic cover off of there so I can access the Phillips head underneath and go ahead and get my solar charge controller connected up here. There's my negative cable attached. I'm gonna get my positive here. Might be a tiny spark here, let's see. Yep, a little bitty one. First thing, I'm gonna turn on my charge controller. Let that initiate for a couple of seconds. We're ready here. I'm gonna go ahead and flip on the solar. Let me zoom in so you can see the power coming in. About 330 watts, 23.6 amps. The battery currently charging is 13.9 volts. So we will let this charge up. Now I do need to go into my charge controller settings, go into the volts, and bring this down to 14.4, as well as the equalize. Push save on that. Now we can get out of here. The Rododo battery has been on the charger in full sun for two days now. And I noticed that it is in float. See if I can zoom in so you can see that. 13.6 volts here on the charge controller. So it is completely charged and ready to go. Let's pull this off and start doing a discharge test. Let me flip the solar off here and that will stop the input. Wait for that to go back to resting. All right, and now I can turn off my charge controller. Now, 
Now that the Rododo battery is 100% charged up, let's go ahead and get a discharge test on this. First of all, I do want to grab a voltage. This thing's been sitting off the charger for a while now. 13.4, so it has dropped down below the 13.5 that it was right off of the charger after two days of charging. But let's go ahead and do this and see what we get here. So get my negative and positive terminals ready. Now I'm gonna be using this uh, Drac uh, little um, meter here. And so that will give us the uh, amp hours and the watts being used and also show us um, uh, the watts that are being consumed. So let's go ahead and get that installed as well. All right, potential for a small pop here. A little bit, not too bad. Before I turn the load on, let's get this device set up here. So instead of 160 amp hours, we need to just do 100 amp hours. So let me scroll this back to just 100. Hold this down to set that value. All right, you can see it still says 160. I've got to disconnect this to reset it, but. All right, so let's go through here real quick. 100 amp hours, 12.8 for the battery voltage. And then those are just high and low, uh, so it's not necessary. All right, let me go ahead and reset this by disconnecting the power from one of the legs. Okay, give that just a moment. Let it reset here. Okay, 100 amp hours up here at the top. I'm gonna hold this button down to reset everything down here. And then reset this kilowatt hours over here. There we go. All right, we are good to go, 100 amp hours. And it does say 13.5 or 13.6 right here, so that is a good sign. Time to flip this load switch here. Turn on this inverter. And then I've also got a kilowatt meter over here, which I'm gonna keep track of the time. So let me do a reset on this. Zero, zero on the time. Very good. Now, if we look at our meter, let me zoom in so you can see this. We've got 164 watts being used. Currently no watt hours and 100 amp hours left. So let's say, uh, let's do the math on this battery. If we have 1,280 watt hours divided by 100 and 63, it'll take this 7.8 hours to be consumed 100%. So I'm actually gonna add a little bit more load on here real quick before we get too far into this to shorten that time some. Now we have 322 watts. So 1,280 divided by 322 should last for barely under four hours. So we should be good right here to continue our test. All right, it has now been three and a half hours. And let's see what we're looking at here on this display. Looks like we've got uh, 21 amp hours left. Battery is at 12.6 volts with a load. We've gone through uh, one kilowatt hour and we're using uh, 264 watts. So whenever my studio lights heat up a bit, they don't uh, consume quite as much power. So. Uh, still have 21 amp hours left. I'll let this sit for a while and we'll see what it looks like when this gets down to about one amp hour. I believe that's it. We're at 0.2 amp hours left, 12.2 volts on this battery and uh, 1,200 watt hours. Let me go ahead and stop this real quick. But first, our time total was four and a half hours. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this inverter over here and let the battery sit for a moment and we'll take a voltage reading to see if we have uh, used up more than the 
8. I think it's going to be around 12.6 or 12.7 after it has been sitting for a moment. Let's do a voltage check here. So we've got 12.55, so definitely lower than 12.8, but we would expect that. The first few minutes of this test, I was pulling 320 watts, and as my studio lights warmed up a bit, it dropped all the way down to about 265. So the load wasn't totally consistent throughout this test, but let's just say the 1,280 watt hours, and let's just use the uh, 265 watts. So 1280 divided by 265 puts this at 4.8 hours. We had four and a half, so that initial 320 watts on the load makes up that last little bit. Um, so yes, this battery, after sitting in the sun charging for two days, has uh, performed with the discharge test as expected based on the uh, specs here. So uh, I had actually performed this same test on my Landa House YouTube channel, and apparently I had the uh, charge controller set to 14.4 and not 14.6 and didn't let it get that full charge that it needed. So um, this is kind of my redo. And so that extra 0.2 volts on the charge controller seems to have brought this thing up to its um, advertised value. So that is good to know. All right, um, as far as construction of the battery goes, seems like a nice uh, build. And uh, like I mentioned before, it has tons of great information on the instruction booklet. It's one of the better ones I have seen. So uh, definitely uh, check out this battery in the links down below to learn some more information. This was given to me for a free review on my other channel. And so I'm bringing it here to you also as a, uh, a free review item. So I'm Seth with the Tools, Tech and Gear channel, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.